All right, thanks for coming to the uh, poetry reading performance. And uh, you guys mostly know me, Peter Fairbanks Miller, Professor Fairbanks. So I'll play you some, uh, some tunes from the book and sing you uh, some of the songs from the book. It's not all uh, songs, but there's a bunch of songs in it. So I figured I would do those so you could have a chance to hear that stuff. All right, so. So this is my first book. I wrote a book, which is, you know, everybody's dream. I did a little uh, research about books after I got going. We found out um, there's about 750,000 new books just in America in this one last year. So it kind of is in a big sea of new books. <laughs> and there are all kinds of people this month reading in different libraries around Vermont reading poetry because it's National Poetry Month. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even know there was a National Poetry Month until I started a poetry book. So now you all know. Right? So um, the book is Let That Fiddle Sing, which is kind of me. Um, this is um, the violin that's on the cover, you see? And, uh, and there's the back of the, the violin. So, and then here's this, the bow. This is the same bow that's on the back of the book right there. There's me, a little picture. And uh, so there, on the front, you know, there's my baby spoon right there. My baby spoon. So there, um, and my, not my first dollar, but it could have been, right? And all ditchiest for my life, there's a peace sign that Deb Choate gave me. And uh, she passed away a couple years ago and, uh, from cancer. It's a little peace sign for your hair. And a thermometer, because I almost became a meteorologist. And uh, some stones I picked up on beaches and some stones that my brothers polished for me. And there are watches on them. You know, so time is so important. You know, like two watches on the cover. Anyway, some little jewelry of, of notes and some, a, a cake of rosin. And there's my tuning fork and to tune the violin. So. Um, Anyway, I will, uh, I'll share a couple of poems with you, and, uh, you know, um, nothing between them, and violin and fiddle, note the difference. Right? There you go. I engage a sound old pastime while I stay young playing the fiddle. Fiddles play dances, violins might sing, delightful nuances. So there's a couple of fiddling ideas, so many thoughts. So little time, so little cost, so form and rhyme. Writing, lore, abating bore, words poor, not a chore. Ah, the pen, write for me meaning then in beauty, bound by nature, bound in kind, now create from loving mind. 
storm to storm fro you prophets you want to go create clearing cloud calming sky peaceful proud poet guy looks around picks up pen off the ground on again so there you go I like that one um, here's uh, as I said this is these are the two bows this is my uh, my two thousand dollar bow here and my two hundred dollar bow there so you can tell the difference between those two bows and there, there are the bows in the book. And I had a lot of fun. I did not know I could illustrate. So I drew all these pictures in here, and I, did, I had no idea up until then I could draw. It was a lot of fun. You have to understand, this is called Please Don't Forget Me. Okay, it's about the bow. You have to understand, it's hard to play the fiddle without me, though plucking is allowed. Pizzicato, it's appreciated, just is not very loud. I am both beautiful and useful, slender with long blonde hair. See, luck favors those who know. This much is true. A fiddler needs a good bow. Now you're talking sticks, and mine is quite simply the best. How perfect the intersection of balance, speed, and flex in Pernambuco reflection. Pernambuco, is, by the way, is the wood that the bow's made out of. I live to play a violin and fiddle, or viola, or bass, even cello. What floats above the instrument crowd? A drumstick? No, the bow. Remember, and I'll be so proud. And I've got, uh, let's see, a couple of others in regarding the instruments here. Uh, I had it all nicely done. Okay, here is the, uh, the tuning fork. That keeps my violin in tune, that little two-dimensional drawing of my tuning fork, right? It's in, it's in the case. I got that when I was 10 years old. In fact, I got this violin here. My parents bought this when I was 10. I'm 52, so I've had it a long time. This one was built in like 1880, so it's seen an awful lot of notes just by my hands. It's been up the top of mountains, and it's been on Lake Champlain, and it's been on sailboats and buses, airplanes. It's been on the gondola up to the top of the mountain. It's been up to the tops of uh, peaks. And played in the winter, summer, fall, winter, spring. First, pluck the A string. A burst of luck, if it does ring, due to human strong ego, true to standard. On we go. No, now the D will join the A. Harmony anointed, eh? How basic sounds play favorites first. Now, stay tuned along to G. Good rhythm makes this melody repeatable by memory. Presuming you have tuned the E. So those are the, those are the strings of the violin. Now I'll tell you about the great violinist who came to town. His fame was recognized the world round. His concerts, his skill so grand that people flocked from all the land to hear him play the violin. Through all this playing, time well spent, he loved this priceless instrument. So one thing he did say, if I'm going to play, then do be careful of the violin. It's a Stradivarius. Its perch is precarious. The violin, so fine, so pure, has long time to test and to endure. Those scientists have strived to see. There are still none who can agree how perfection formed so long ago. Engineers have searched in vain for materials that will regain the sound, the resonance, that rich tone. This harmony cannot be found in any other violin. It's a Stradivarius. Its perch is precarious. Do not sit on the violin. Do not sit on the violin. I told you once, I told you twice, do not sit on the violin. The audience was filing in. Ladies, children, and gentlemen. In the front rows of the crowd stood sat fortunate students, all so proud to hear such a violin. Far and wide, a million strong, stood the humble peasant throng. And though they were out in the rain, not one of them did complain that they'd come to hear this violin. It's a Stradivarius. Its perch is precarious. Backstage, mighty leaders heard the great violinist's guiding word. Before I explain what I know, I have a brief call, so I must go. But do be careful of the violin. One very large man did not heed the great violinist's parting plea. And having had so much to eat, he did so need to rest his feet as fate visited this violin. Crunch! Oh, no, I told you, do not sit on the violin. Do not sit on the violin. I told you twice. I'll tell you again. Do not sit on the violin. It was a Stradivarius. Why did it come to this? And there I have drawn a, a picture of a label. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, in, uh, lots of violins and fiddles have labels inside that say it's Stradivarius. So here's an actual, you know, if you have your own copy book, an actual picture of a label that I drew from looking at it from uh, 1733, a long time ago. Now here's one about the case. Because, you know, you have to carry your instruments around in, your in the case. So, if 
lot of people don't have cases though. Old hand molded leather holds the key, holds the answer to a lifetime of melodies, made with each sustaining note and meter played so passionately, replaced there so carefully. Taken out each afternoon, such removal leaves the space an open, empty, free from any burden, an open, empty case waiting patiently in place. Such a routine undertaking affords the player freedom from worries about breaking important contents within while traveling toward or away from home. This concept is not foreign, but far from a player's mind while playing. Music is pouring from every kind, cell and kind delivery meant to feed your soul. Holding dear our caring values, so continues our inner need. A quality case pays its dues, acquiring grace without greed. Is there a, is there a question to here? So there you go. I have uh, covered the aspects of the, of the violin, the case, the bow, the tuning fork, the old historic violin. Now I will play you a little guitar. Now that I claimed I only play the uh, fiddle, I will try to, uh, to play you the, the violin. I'm going to play the guitar. Let's see. This tune, in last dollar moment, has never been performed. I had to make a tune this week so that I could sing it to you. Okay, so I'll try this out. That last dollar moment, steady long ago. On the key of the no taco, didn't make a show. Even then I knew success wasn't far behind. That last dollar moment would last long in a bye. Surely changed, better times rolled in. Success is time just rearranged, best times ever been. Looking forward, looking back, a lucky time and place. All concerns are cared for, and there's no visible trace of wear and tear, no luck to straw, or even time worn thin. Success in the last dollar moment, the best times ever been. So uh, let me see. Hmm. I, I'm going to do. Uh, ah, yes. When you take poetry as a kid, you know sometimes you don't like it, and that was really me. <laughs> um, and so who, how I came to write a poetry book, I don't know. But I've been writing poetry for over 20 years, and most of it has been, you know, early on there were lyrics, trying to write songs and whatnot. Um, but they turned into. Um, some poems, and this, and then you, you get assigned at school. Um, okay, use the first, uh, use um, a word from each of the letters of the alphabet. Okay, so then you make a poem that way. So, uh, alpha, beta, carotene, and do, si, do. E squared equals funk. Got you here, I'm a jam. Keep it easy and emotion. Ever over pepper, quick ride, slow and tender. Vermonter wants a zina, yo, yo, zen. What I'm saying? Uh, do you know your stuff? Baby, ooh, do you know your stuff? Baby, all about the brain can be confusing. Do you ever feel great having infinite jizzam? Keep illuminating on purpose. Quite the reckless sayer to undervalue an X plus Y equals Z. See, do you know your stuff? Baby, ooh, do you know your stuff? Baby, do you know your stuff? Baby, ooh, do you know your stuff? Baby. Hey, that's called Hazy AZ. So I have another uh, uh, rap, which is on that CD, which is, there's a, I've made a CD like what, when people still make CDs, um, in 2000, year 2000. So amazingly enough, it's 13 years ago. Um, Normally Demented is the name of the CD, okay? So Normally Demented is my current state of mind. I can't seem to figure what to do with my time. I think about activity, but I don't know who I should be there, so I'm a no show. Think about activity, think about activity. Think, 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 think. Other people do, 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 do. I, da, 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 da. Other people who, 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 who. I, ha, 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 ha. 
Uh, let it be known I'm truly one of a kind with an attitude adjuster on the drop of a dime. I'm playing, working, playing, playing, working, playing hard because I can't pin me down now to fill out my card. Just do that activity. Just do that activity. Just, 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 just. I do, 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 do. Other people da, 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 da. I who, 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 who. Other people ha, 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 ha. Normally demented. Normally demented. Normally demented. Normally. I'd love to, uh, to do for you. Um, short, sweet, how complete. Please follow these directions. Repeat. Now repeat. <laughs> That's a haiku. I have a Mobius strip inside repeat signs for those who have taken math. I won't read you any of the... Uh, of the winter. I was going to, yeah, I, I will. I'll read you the, uh, this one, um, haiku burr, okay? So I took liberties with some of my haiku, but most of them are 575, the way you learn, okay? This one is, just because we had that sleep storm, soon old man winter will be but a memory. Spring is almost here. There you go. There's some of them are short, short, sweet. I'm going to sing you who you are, okay? See if I can... Get this one for you. Telling some folks earlier, this macrame guitar strap here was made for me in like 1983. So it's 30 years old here. <coughs> See, I haven't played this in a while, but I'll try it.
Can you hear it ringing? Must be Chairman Mao. <laughs> I had to say that. Okay. I see you walking by there, and I want to know who you are. I feel like saying hi there, because I want to know who you are. of mine take the time to embrace the beauty of the morning gentle breeze mind at ease open to the beauty and to see every single fern is like an angel each an open hand of history. Every invitation is unfolding. Find the time to listen and to be. Right. I like that short. I like short poems. I used to not like poetry because they're always really long. Uh, Jen Bartlow, our librarian, knows all of the Jabberwock by, by heart, which is amazing to me. Okay, but this is not the Jabberwock. This is a picture of Hopscotch. Some of you guys might know Hopscotch, right? It's all right. We had that other uh, president for a while there and kept talking about the line in the sand or whatever. But uh, I, I didn't understand that. Anyway, step across that dividing line and come on out to play. There's no need to stay inside just to keep your fears at bay. Step across that dividing line. You know I'll do it too. I can only understand if I know you. Let me walk in your weird shoes and we can play some games. We could share some secret news and call each other's names. We'll count the birds and make a rhyme. I'll race you around the hill. No dividing line stands the test of time and neither will standing still. All right, so uh, let's see. This one's coming around. I have to have my, uh, I bought a, um, uh, well, you guys, I bought that rider mower from your former house owner and uh, got it for cheap, you know, 150 bucks, you know. I had uh, Dwayne Chase fix it all up with, you know, new battery, whatever, and, he's, and I, he brought it back and the gas line's all cracked and you know, I'm looking at it, I was like, can you replace it? He says, oh no, that's sound, that's all nice. It looks cracked, but it's still good, it's good. 
So this winter, about January 20th, in the heart of the winter, I'm going outside, I'm like, what is that gas smells? Like, is my heating system, you know, messing up? But no, that gas line has ruptured in the middle of winter. So before I can mow, I have to actually fix the mower again. Yay. Okay, so here's mow my grass. And there's my soccer ball, which I invariably left out in the yard when I used to mow. Mow, my grass grows fast. So again, I make my pass up the hill. Shrill whining blades slice and dice beneath. Around the bend, the, extent, the estate extends beyond comprehension. Sun meets lawn at yawning horizon. Along the wall, avoid the ball left loose, calling home to its rightful owner. Maneuver slower through a queue of juniper shrub, bordering a butternut canopy covering the corridor. My view is unbelievable. The mower makes a clean cut. Fiddle melodies through my head abound. The engine drowns all audible sound. Ride beside the juicy bog, no slogging or sinking beside the stinking waterlogged section. Except for me, no one witnesses this particularly wonderful beauty. Dutifully, my mower and I roll slowly past. Elastic grasses always growing, ever knowing through my passage. Engaged patterns aft have the last laugh. The stage is finally set backwards. The mower stays nigh at rest nor slack. When I'm done, I have to start back again when I really should be practicing my violin. <laughs> anyway, it's been a lot of fun to, uh, to do this. I don't know how much time we got, but uh, we have to be done at three because the book club comes here, and it's very important that they start. Uh, this is the last poem in the book, and I wrote another whole book next to the, you know, in the book. It's called Tidbit, the book of Tidbit, which I really like. It's only one word, Tidbit. Inspiration is useful only, to the, only if it is put to use by the inspired. So it's short, sweet. A lot of the poems in the book are, are short, but they, they uh, you know, I don't like really long, 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 long poems. Here's one haiku true. I believe when one notices, then one knows. There you go. So I don't know if it's true or not. So there you go. I, I'm having a lot of fun with this. And uh, airflow. Birds are coming back. You might, I, some of you ever do, the, do you ever do the bird count, any of you? Um, make a notation of what you've seen starting in January. I don't, but my neighbor uh, does. On her, where, on her way to where does she know, as the air does twice flow, to and then again fro, full of care she will go, upon the variable airflow, there she soars, ergo she is. Here and now a pair climb higher into clarity, without despair, as they know, liar is the scarecrow, desire and the airflow. They fly on to prosperity, to bear, they bring charity, to air a place of sheer beauty. There, they are surely home. I don't know where it came from. I just like birds. So. Here's a melon that Annie and I grew. It's a honeydew, a musk, a honey or a cantaloupe, a musk melon, right? And I sliced it open on the counter, and then I drew it with pencil, like right then. So it's got the seeds and everything right in there. My father's favorite, one of his favorite foods is a Crenshaw melon. So it's a sweet melon. So anyway, happiness at peace in mind. An agreeable, unhurried kindness, tranquility, humility, and fruitfulness, ripeness inside melody. <laughs> I will play you uh, a couple of others. Some of you knew my dog, Jerry. I will really read that for you. Jerry was my dog for 15 years. He was all a Twitter. The concept here is to use the word Twitter. I kept hearing it. I don't tweet, but I kept hearing Twitter, so I was going to use it in this poem somehow, right? He was all a Twitter, but he didn't tweet like a bird, like Tweedledee. The writing was on the eye wall. He was all a fluster, like toast without crust, like he'd heard the likes of thee. Fighting reality, that's all. He was quite the critter, like he ever quit the way he lived, the life of glee, politely returning the ball. He was full of muster, like coasting through dust, like words of his time will be continuing. Stand tall. So there, you can write a poem for your for your dog. All right, let's see. What else should I play? Oh, I'll play you uh, maybe one more on the guitar. This is also an unperformed tune. And then uh, maybe we'll wrap it up there, unless we have another tune to. I'll fiddle for you. There we go. My buddy. Uh, Tracy Walters used this word lacuna once. 
And we were like, what does that mean? Okay, there's forgetful time, right? Something that you forget. Okay, we're gonna go to Lacuna Bay on Lacuna Cay. Let's see if I can get it right. The Kuna Bay on the Kuna Cay. I forget the rest, but it's restful. Hey, maybe I'll see you there, but who knows when and who knows where. So I'll see you then on the Kuna Bay. On the Kuna Cay. The Kuna Bay on the forget the past, forget the rest. The rest today I'll take you where we might have been if we knew where we'd both be there on the Kuna Bay, on the Kuna Cay, on the Kuna Cay, on the Kuna Bay. be restful there. I don't even know where it is. It's down there somewhere, though. There's a picture of it in the book. It looks like a little bay with sailboats, and you're on the beach getting, you know, your appropriate amount of suntan, and um, there's a little, you know, wind shelter, and your little barbecue. Sailboats are ready to leave if you need to. Palm trees. Right? What else could there be? Uh, anyway, this I we might wrap it up. A couple more. Oh, Slate Jake. I got yeah. my fancy uh, system of telling me which poems are not songs. Slake Jake Troubadour saunters slowly through the door. Few tunes earn a sup, herbal smoke a smoldering cup. Bird tricks music man, sings like only songbirds can. Sound thought muses Jake, singer does a double take. Right here, could it be? Songbirds singing my melody? Why not words? They may bring other songbirds my so Jake, in his most worthy bird song, sings this toast to all singers free to fly away. Sing with me. Some stay, others go. But we know songbirds sing their own song. We can only sing along. <laughs> all right. Oh, then there's one more. Okay, we have a babe. We have babes. So I'll read this one. This is kind of weird. I don't know where this one came from, but there it is. Because I deal with time, right? Counting time all the time. Born needy, we were all that way. Bloody feed me before I crawl away. In a hurry, my blurry-eyed baby. So sorry, you have no choice. Your voice still imprisoned within, you can only cry. Why worry? How absurd. Do babies really worry about whether words go unheard? They try all the while to hold attention. Then without warning, we behold such a smile. Plus, piled high, plies the child's eye. She always has time to play. It is, is it me alone to witness my seas, who seizes each day the way it pleases me? While breezes blush, brush by, true beauty never blushes, only calls into favor, savors all without rush. Time beating leads one to ponder, to wander in words, when time now flees. There you go. I want to read you one more. It's Endeavor. Where is that one? Endeavor. I'll find it. Um, this is happened over in Maine. I might have to look at the. Um, oh, I should read that one. I don't know. Ruts of oh, here's the Okay, Ruts of March, but it's not March anymore, right? You can see our road. Well, you guys can also. 
All right, this is uh, my cousin Chris and I, you know, we actually did this. There's my picture of the huge, honking, big, huge, Maine's biggest hay pile there, okay? The day we made the great state of Maine's most hailing highest hay pile, we piled it straight up, a yup, up as a cup before supper. Our supplier was the dry hay field high above the harbor, cut on a recent sunny day, just intended for us to gather for some perfect quality clay. But cousin Chris was wantonly lax, as he laid waste without much haste, he hemmed and he hawed, finally declaring, I'm done. But I, who was there because we were supposed to go for the outside, was serious about the pile being bona fide. So, with my energy fully applied, I declared I've just begun. I laid waste with utmost haste. As I aimed higher, the pile went wilder still than my most imagination, imaginative dreams. I will never forget that ridiculous I might have covered it. There's a few other poems in here. Here's my song. Fiddle again? Yes, I can do that. I can do that. I'll play you this. Uh, my Wolf Brothers German student issue basic fiddle that I've had for 42 years, 43 years now, right? <laughs> one more piece, uh, the sweet reel. We are still in sugaring season, apparently. Right? I just stopped. This is, a, this is a bizarre kind of serendipity. Serendipity, that's a great poetic word. Uh, on the way home from uh, finally paying off my graphic designer, the extra money I owed her, um, I saw, that was on Pleasant Valley Road, and I saw a steam on the Lower Valley Road. This is just a few days ago. So uh, I went over. Um, and I'm seeing the sugar house, and it looked like it was right there. But as I got to it, I'm realizing it's way up there in the hill. So there was a road kind of. So I started up with my Toyota. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I can't see over the hill. I don't know what's going to. No. So I backed back down, parked, and hooked it up to there. Okay? So I meet Jay, Jerry, and Jeff Marsh from our town. Okay? They've been making, and they're brothers with grayish white hair. Okay? 
And they're like, look like the, like the three knights from yeah. Arthur's Cable or something, you know, making syrup for generations, just the three of them. Yeah. And I said, boy, you guys still get along. He said, yeah, we can still get along. So then I, I taste the syrup and, you know, talk a little bit, go down to Bruce's store, and go in, and there's the woman behind the counter. And, and I can't remember her first name now. But anyway, she's Jay's wife. And I had not met her before, so I meet him, and then I meet her, the next person. That's kind of strange. You know, the couple, like, right in the same afternoon. I just thought that was bizarre. Anyway, here's the sweet reel. I wrote this a few years ago. It's just a reel, and so, you know. Enjoyed our little show this afternoon. Thank you for coming out and not going to the Sweet Mountain. <laughs>